after Winfrey graduated, she moved to Baltimore, Maryland, where she did cut-ins during Good Morning America. But soon she was moved to the morning talk show with co-host Richard Scher. After seven years, the general manager of ABC's Chicago affiliate saw Winfrey in an audition tape sent in by her producer, Deborah DeMille. At the time, her ratings in Baltimore were better than Phil Donahue's, a national talk show host, and she and DeMille were hired. Winfrey moved to Chicago, Illinois in January of 1984 and took over as anchor on AM Chicago, a morning talk show that was consistently last in the ratings. She changed the emphasis of the show from traditional women's issues to current and controversial debatable topics. After one month, the show was even with Donahue's program. Three months later, it inched ahead. In September of 1985, the program, now renamed The Oprah Winfrey Show, was expanded to one hour. As a result, Donahue moved to New York City. In 1985, Quincy Jones saw Winfrey on television and thought she would make a fine actress in a movie he was co-producing with director Steven Spielberg. The film was based on the Alice Walker novel, The Color Purple. You may have heard of it, The Color Purple. Her only acting experience until then had been in a one-woman show, The History of Black Women Through Drama and Song, which she performed during an African-American theater festival in 1978. The popularity of Winfrey's show skyrocketed after the success of The Color Purple, and in September of 1985, the distributor King World bought the syndication rights to air the program in 100 and 38 cities, a record for first-time syndication. That year, although Donahue was being aired on over 200 stations, Winfrey won her time slot by 31%. She drew twice the Chicago audience's Donahue and carried the top 10 markets in the United States. In 1986, Winfrey received a special award from the Chicago Academy for the Arts for unique contributions to the city's artistic community and was named Woman of Achievement by the National Organization of Women. The Oprah Winfrey Show won several Emmys for Best Talk Show when Winfrey was honored as the Best Talk Show host. Winfrey formed her own production company, Harpo, in August of 1986 to produce the topics that she wanted to see produced, including the television drama miniseries based on Gloria Naylor's The Woman of Brewster Place, in which Winfrey was featured along with Cicely Tyson, Robin Givens, Olivia Cole, Jackie, Paula, Kelly, and Lynn Whitfield. In 1996, Oprah changed the game when she started an on-air reading club. This is one of my all-time favorite moments I'm having on television right now. You are witnessing it. On September 17th, Winfrey stood up and announced she wanted to get the country reading. She told her adoring fans to hasten to the stores to buy the books she had chosen. They would then discuss it together on-air the following month. The initial reaction was astonishing. The first book, The Deep End of the Ocean, had generated significant sales for her first novel. 68,000 copies had gone into the stores since June, but between the last week in August when Winfrey told her plans to the publisher and the September on-air announcement, Viking printed 90,000 more. By the time the discussion was broadcast on October 18th, there were 750,000 copies in print. The book became a number one bestseller, and another 100,000 were printed before February of 97. 